Hello and welcome to See If It Sticks, the only podcast that takes your first world problems, wraps them in a delightful sweetie wrapper, feeds them to a pig, and then that pig provides you with beautiful pig shit solutions. Mmm, that was a weird one. Mm, I'm Dom. I am Dan. And I'm Auntie Bram. Hey! Hey. Auntie Bram's here. It's been fun. Special guest this week, because Ross is still off making money or whatever. Yes, he needs enough money to, uh, I believe, he's trying to build his own submersible, submersible vehicle. Yeah. So that he can drive his way to. The Netherlands. Yes, so I've heard. It wouldn't surprise me. No, it wouldn't surprise me either. That would actually be quite cool, wouldn't it? It would be quite cool. Really... Why does he need to go to the Netherlands? Yeah, why exactly oh, the Netherlands? Why did you say the Netherlands? <laughs> I just wondered what's his aim when he gets there. Well, because, you know, you, had a, you used to be able to get a helicopter over to the Netherlands. Did you? You used to be able to get a helicopter over to Amsterdam. I don't think they do it anymore. You can fly to Amsterdam quite cheap. Yeah. But you used to be able to get a helicopter Really? Yeah, because it's quite close, isn't it? Yeah. Just, I've never I never heard of that. Yeah, you just nip across the water. You used to be able to get a helicopter. Wow. So, um, you know. Now you have I, to I w- swim. I would say that if you were going to go on, like, in terms of cool, like, now your options to go to, Nether- to, to Amsterdam is, like, fly in an airplane. Yeah. Or I guess you could, is, is there a, there's a ferry that goes across, isn't there? Yes. I believe. Uh, but I think that goes to, like, um, there's a place. And it begins with a B. I can't, I don't know. Yeah. It's probably got multiple vowels in it. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dutch those. is a strange, two, strange Two language. I's and a J together. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, um, it's funny enough, you should mention uh, getting to the Netherlands because the other day I walked, I walked into the front room and uh, Steve was watching. Our uh, friend Steve. Our friend Steve was, uh, who lives with me because he's my sister's boyfriend also. Um, they answers, all live it. They all answers live to how you think I reacted to that on a stamped address envelope. <laughs> they, um, they, they all live in Dom's basement yeah. currently. <laughs> uh, he was watching that episode of Only Fools and Horses where they get the boat and try and go to the Netherlands. Yeah. And he stops at like the oil rig and asks directions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just, uh, that sort of just made me uh, think that in my mind. Yeah. Um, I mean, flying in helicopters is cool. Yeah. It's horrible though. Is it? I've yeah. never flown in, I've never like flown in a helicopter yeah, before. Yeah, it's not like smooth and silky like it is in a plane. Oh, really? Like you full on like jolt with the with the movement of the propeller. Can I can I ask? This might, this might be a personal question. Why did you fly, fly in a helicopter? Well, uh, I had been avoiding the CIA for about three months. But they, uh, <laughs> eventually Wait, caught does up this involve, or involve you like standing at the end of like a dam... Uh, <laughs> outlet like, with with the with the uh, the CIA officer behind you, and then you jump down to your death, and then the or music, so the people music, think. The music sort of goes, yeah, like your violins going like that, <laughs> and then you just see this Apache attack helicopter rise out of the mist <laughs> with you on top of it and a bazooka. I'm afraid not. Oh. <laughs> Far less like, glamorous than that, that. That is just, <laughs> thinking about it, The Fugitive is just like the ultimate action movie team up, isn't it? Tommy Lee Jones and Harrison Ford. Mm. Both sounding completely like inaudible. <laughs> they both speak so quietly all the time. That oh. is such a problem. Remind me to write in next week. Oh my God. <laughs> no, every, that, yeah. every TV series I watch now... Completely inaudible. I have to watch TV with the subtitles on so I can understand what the fuck people are saying. Do you know why that is? Not even joking. It's so frustrating. Do you know why that is? No, fix it if you know why. With a regular TV. So Um, annoying. Because now everything is broadcast in surround sound. Mm. So the music's really, really high in the mix. You might be able to change the settings, the sound settings on your television to focus on the voice. Right, that's Mm. it. You're coming around, you're going to fix my telly. Is that the reason that the subtitles were on on your television when we came around your house? All the time. Oh, actually, no. Sorry, it wasn't. Just to give a little bit of context during our listening, over the um, summer, uh, Maddie, uh, well, end of summer, Maddie and I house sat for Lauren and her wife and then Dom took over from us. <laughs> yes. Because why have, why have one when you can have all two, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It, but it was, sorry, it wasn't the subtitles. It was the, um, and I might have accidentally knocked this on, but it was the, um, 
you know the where they talk the audio description the audio description oh yeah no, okay that was you and i was getting really confused <laughs> because i didn't realize it was on and i was kind of working johnny walks to the bed there's a pile of money yeah i was kind of jingle I, jingle jingle <laughs> i was i was do you know what the thing what the thing that was on was was top gear it was an old top gear. Oh, oh, no. right, right. and the thing Hilarious. was is that it was it was one of those episodes where like they're they're doing lots of like get putting celebrities in the cars and things like that it was real old jeremy clarkson's hair was still relatively brown yes, dyed right. dyed brown that's um, how you know the age of a top gear how gray yeah. jeremy yeah. clarkson's hair <laughs> the thing was is i was kind of half on my laptop um doing some work while it was on and uh every now and again it would sort of go inside the car and it would be and it would say something kind of humorous like um you know he looks he, distressed. He, yes, he, he he looks appalled at the something, and then something crunches, and he goes, and it says, he looks perplexed. <laughs> and, sort of and I thought it was like this, like a you know, like a bit, like <laughs> you know, like, like like the joke was like this car is like so overly intelligent that it knows what you're doing all the time because <laughs> right. it sounds like a sat nav when it was doing it, and I was do- I kept looking up, thinking I don't remember this happening in this episode, and then it was like. And then it was like saying, like, uh, he takes the corner wide. <laughs> and and I, thought, I thought, I thought, I really don't remember this joke happening. Uh, but, you know, because it was on, you know, the TV, sh- TV channel Dave, which does repeats of Top Gear all day, every day. Yes, yeah. indeed. And I kind of thought, you know, I've seen all of these episodes at least four or five times just on in the background. And I don't ever remember this joke playing out. I wonder how it's going to happen. And then it happened in an advert. And I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> 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 I, heard you know, it. I think I knocked the audio description on when I was staying there as Probably. well. Probably. It's the bottom left button of the yeah, remote. I think it's so actually, it's really as I picked, easy to, to, got BT to Vision, knock it. Yeah. Other yeah, streaming the, the slash thing. TV packages are We don't available. actually pay for it anymore because it's oh, right. shit. So we just uh, cancelled it and now we just have the box. But uh, it's still stuck. It's like on a freebie box. Yeah. But yeah. <laughs> anyway. Um, I'll write back that next week. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, have we got some... Correspondence. We do have some correspondence. Is it Dan um, Mail? It is Dan Mail. Yes. And speaking of, uh, you know, super uh, action stars. Yes. Jamie Lenny has ah. written it. Hey. He, is an, he is action man. He basically <laughs> is action man. Yeah. I, I have heard. Down to the uh, flat fronted genitalia. <laughs> I, I have heard that if you, if you look at the back of Jamie Lilly's head, you can look through his eye as, <laughs> as though it were your own eye. Digga, 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 digga. We um, have the technology, <laughs> we rebuilt him. <laughs> you know, my dad used to have, um, there's low, at my nan's house, there's a whole box of like action man stuff that my, like my dad and my uncles had when they were kids. And some of those old action men were really creepy, like in the set, in like the late 60s early 70s all right like there's this one i always remember it were they like gi joe style like old school gi joe like the first like kind of action men yeah they're like the old school gi joes yeah that's where they came from oh right i thought it was the other way around no g um actually gi joe spawned action man oh okay okay my bad not literally um i remember this this one being in there i remember playing with it a lot when i was a kid and he had like a little slot with like a lever thing on the back of his head and then when you moved it, his eyes looked from oh, side to side. Hey. But the thing was, that if you moved it like to the furthest point, like in, when, it, when you're sort of just tinkering with it in the middle, like it looks like his eyes are dying around. But if you went right the way over to the sides, that you could see like real like whites of his eyes. <laughs> it was so weird. It was so incredibly weird. Creepy ass. Like real like nightmarish stuff. Like, if they made if they if they put that into Toy Story, kids would have been like vomiting in the theater. <laughs> I think they were at Toy Story three. The oh. shock and scariness. I have in it don't don't really oh god it. no it's you're gonna cry it's another it's another one on the list i'm bored of being berated for it already <laughs> we won't berate you then thanks guys all right jamie linney says hello boys good podcast this week and nice to hear Stu again hey. thanks for trying to solve my running dilemma so last week lauren which i missed sorry to, about that just to catch you up jamie's problem is that he had he had turned over his foot he <gasps> sprained his ankle on one of his God, training that's sessions that's why i did it i've been channeling jamie linney i sprained my ankle four weeks ago fucking sick of it already How did you do i'm so it? bored i was playing netball and i went over on it crunch thought i'd broken it was it leaves because that's what caused jamie was it a slip it was yeah it was just a skid and i went See, over there we go 
Jamie uh, was went out for one of his uh, training runs. Fifty training runs and, a day. Um, two yeah. minute, two minutes into it, so probably by Jamie Lini's standards, that was about ten miles. Yeah. Um, <laughs> he slipped in some wet leaves. Oh, mate! And turned his foot over. So, and oh. he's, he said that he's going to have to be off of it for like three to six weeks. He sent in a picture. It was I'm fucking like massive. five weeks really down. Massive. Yeah, I'm like five weeks in. It's not getting any better. I'm oh, bored God. shitless. I'm really crabby because I'm not getting any exercise. I haven't been horse riding. Fucking miserable. Jamie, it's it's all bad. Do you know, I was actually bizarrely at my at the design studio for my work today, very briefly, in Bethesden. And there's a little um, hair salon there that's just underneath our office. And I was just getting in my car and I looked over and there was this beautiful, big brown horse mm. with a lady on it. And I thought, holy shit, that's Lauren. <laughs> and I thought, why have you, like, you've like ridden your horse like <laughs> 20 miles. Like, <laughs> I, I, I didn't, I didn't realise that you could do that. I thought it was only in like country and western films. Like country and western films, just western films. Country and western films. I hurt myself. <laughs> Seriously, it was. It was. Oh, I it was, love that. It could have actually I been you. It were me. It's the same hair, everything. Same like facial complexion, everything from like, from a from like, from a distance. I thought it was you. Started walking over to the hairdressers. This is sort of like a dusky time. It was about half past four this afternoon. <laughs> Turns out it was a fat 40 year old bloke. No, no, no. <laughs> no, it was, it was, it was essentially your doppelganger, hey. but, but it must've looked really weird. Cause I was just like in this empty dusky car park. They were having a chat to the hairdressing people who always stare at me like I'm a weirdo anyway, cause they kind of don't recognize me yet. And then I just went striding across the car park, got halfway and thought, that's not Lauren. <laughs> Turned out. <laughs> just went back to my car. I must have looked like a fucking Terminator just like <laughs> dun, dun, across dun, the dun, car dun. Park in my shirt and shoes. Do you know what? That's happened to me before. They probably thought times. you were the health and safety inspector. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's happened to me a few times. Got a, a, like an illegal horse grooming yeah. ring at night. <laughs> they, close, they close the hair salon down during the day and yeah. do mains in the evening. <laughs> Sorry, Dom. Yeah, it's happened to me before loads of times where I think, oh, look, there's like Dan, for instance. I think it must have happened like that before. Probably just a dude wearing a hat. Yeah. And I just sort of went to stride over. And you get to within like, I don't know. It's, it's close enough to be recognised, but not enough to be able to save it. Normally. Yeah, you sort yeah. of get within 20 feet of the person and you're like, nope. And then it's <laughs> oh, like, <fuck. laughs> I have two choices here. Turn right around or just keep on walking past them. <laughs> And most of the time, what I do is I just keep on striding <laughs> past them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're so no one's going to argue with you, Dom. So embarrassed that you circumnavigate the earth <laughs> just to get back to your car. You walk 80 million miles just to save yourself the embarrassment. But no, what I normally do is I get past them. I get another sort of like, I don't know, 10 or so feet and I go... Oh, I turned my around and forgot something. You get, do, you get, do you look at your phone and go, oh. <laughs> yeah. Pretty much I just go, oh, God. Yeah, that's generally what I do. Yeah. The life of a socially awkward man. <laughs> so uh, so we solved Jamie's slippery yes. problem. Uh, there were a few solutions that we banded about. Um, the one that we kind of arrived on was sort of underfloor heating for the entire earth. Nice. So the, Lasers. You never, we were using the, the earth's core magma ideal um, so then you'd have like fiery streets yeah like under like like nice. it'd be glass pavements and you just see the magma flowing underneath i was actually thinking about this metal. when we when we when i got home i'm gonna walk my dog then well here's here's the thing right so you you build on a heated floor right it's only yeah. yeah it gets up to like sort of 20 30 degrees so it's enough that it would you know on a hot if you get like you know a bit of sun come out well, just after it's rain you can see all of the rain sort of oh, eva- evaporating lovely. away it would be warmer than that. So everything would kind of just evaporate. Ice would melt away. But I was thinking, you know, we were talking about, you know, sort of how when you have heated flooring, mm. it's water, isn't it? It's just like a radiator underneath. Yeah. Pretty yeah. Much. Drain the oceans and use that water. Oh, fantastic <laughs> idea. And then we've got more space to put houses on too. Oh, that's true. <laughs> what would we do with all the fish? Eat them. Ah, oh, I see. Eat them all. Oh. Keep them in fish tanks. Oh. Hmm. Obviously, we could have them swimming around in the water. What would we do water. with all the oxygen-producing algae? 
eat them. <laughs> <laughs> Take their oxygen for ourselves. <laughs> so if was we, that the option in the end? That was the uh, That was the option, choice. but Jamie preferred another option. Excellent. He said my favourite solution was the sonic wave oh, trainers. Well, what? 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 Oh. Sonic wave trainers. Ouch. I believe I'm that, was that was Dom's. one of my... Uh, that uh, that sound they would make is just awesome and would love to be able to use some. Just to help clear up the photo, because we saw the photo of his ankle and we said, is that a leaf? He said, uh, if, which would be ironic because it was the bastard leaves that caused the injury. <laughs> <laughs> it is, in fact, the bottom of his dragon tattoo on his calf. Oh. Ah. His ankle was still not too good. Five weeks going on. There you yeah. go. You must have, it must have been the same, t- same yeah. time. And he's going crazy not being able to run still. Are you oh the same God. person? Are you yeah. Jamie Lilly? <laughs> no. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Show us your ankle. <laughs> Girl with the dragon tattoo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wait a minute. Can I just look on the back of your head to see if I can see through your eye? <laughs> uh, he also sent us a problem. We'll solve that another time. He sent a further uh, message saying, heard the Halloween podcast discussing horror films. In this, if any of you do love them and don't mind foreign films look for one called dream home it's japanese with english subtitles me and my brother saw it at horror fest a few years ago pretty fucked up film but well worth a watch for horror lovers also been watching stranger things on netflix netflix smashed the first series in three days jesus wow. awesome show just thought i'd share with you are you watching are you watching stranger things at all no, i haven't gotten around to watching season two yet uh, we we're about halfway through season two. As you know, my my TV schedule is about six months behind everyone else. Yes, yeah. I've only just started watching The Expanse. You say you are you so you haven't started watching season. Two. Well, if you're watching season one though, that you're not too far behind everyone. Oh no, what of Stranger Things? Yeah, no, no, no. I'm. If you've watched, watched season one, yeah. So I'm saying, if you've watched season one, you're not too far behind. No, I could start watching it this week. Might be what we do this Good. evening. I've been, we, we've been watching the new Louis Theroux Dark State series. Oh, yeah. We, we, we started on that. Yeah. That's good. We haven't watched the one where he does anorexia yet, though. No, we haven't. I think we watched the uh, heroin one. I've watched the heroin one, which is fucking harrowing. Yeah, it's You actually see it. people shooting up in it. Oh, wow. Um, He's very good at just getting in there, isn't he? Yeah. He wasn't so good once, once he'd shot up... Um, a half gram of heroin. No, was he was pretty... Uh, he really got into it. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Would that bring you okay. off of Louis yeah, Theroux if, yeah, you, okay, if, you, yeah. if you watched him <laughs> shooting up? <laughs> I, think it's, I think it's enough to put you off anyone, really. Yeah, I agree. And then he did one on like sex trafficking and prostitution. We haven't watched that one yet. And then there was the one about um, the Milwaukee. Um, there's a city. I don't know if the city was called Milwaukee. Is Milwaukee a state? No idea. I think Milwaukee's a state. There's a city in milwaukee that has the highest number of murders in the u.s oh right okay. wow. it's like serious gun crime and there's like guns going off everywhere and he was just exploring that whole situation hmm. yeah louis Theroux. i fucking love louis Theroux. Mm. it's like a fun fun night in i like to be depressed before i go to bed <laughs> <laughs> he's i love it i love it when he does that like his interview technique is just stare at the person just be like really okay it like but it's amazing the kind of yeah. responses it elicits it's like Hello, I'm Louie. Hi, I'm Jane. <laughs> I started on heroin when I was 13 <laughs> years old. <laughs> do you know, what though? I, do you know yeah. what though? That sort of shows the power of listening, I think. Oh yeah, yeah. I agree. Um, mm. When you sit there and you just listen to people, you don't say much. You just sort of go, oh, okay. Well, I'm sure we've talked about it on this podcast mm. before when it, we, he did that, um, the one about when uh, people had suffered um, head trauma and they sort of turned into a different person yes, afterwards. Yeah. Oh, wow. Have you seen that one? Mm-mm. It's crazy. This guy who's like a sort of a middle class sort of athletic guy from school and he had this massive brain trauma and woke up like loving gangster rap and stuff like this and was just really abusive to his mother. Yeah. And then um, like his mum was sort of, you know, getting quite upset about it and Lou was in the kitchen and this guy came out and he was quite a nice guy in general and he sort of like came out and just started like going off at his mum and Louis just just goes to hit like just completely pacifies the situation and he just goes oh what if his name was like Daryl or something like yeah, that yeah 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 like, oh Daryl did you did you just come in here to have a go at your mum because you're losing at FIFA and this guy just immediately just goes like completely placid doesn't he and just yeah. goes yeah <laughs> It was amazing. It, like wow. just all of the tension, just like, cause it was this real, real awkward situation. Like he was swearing at her and she was getting like visibly upset yeah. and sort of like, you know, she'd been saying the whole time anyway, like, 
you know, she even though it sort of breaks her heart, she can't have him at home because he's just too, yeah. uh, you know, unpredictable. Mm. Um, wow. Yeah, and then just immediately, did you just did you just go off at your mum because you're lo- losing at FIFA? And it, it just, all the tension drops out of the room and he says, yeah. And then he goes over and like apologizes, gives her a hug, says, I'm so sorry. I thought, fucking hell. Don't be so rude though. <laughs> we will praise him. Yes. Mm. Fantastic. Um, so we've got a problem this week. Um, I need to interject. Oh, interject. I would like to wish Jamie Linney get well extremely soon. Oh, that's Because oh, I'm sweet. fucking miserable, so I dread to think how he's feeling. Well, it's because, like Superman being like bashed with kryptonite, isn't it? Yeah, like, that's uncool. That is an low. uncool That must be what situation. it is. You know, it, it's this recent thing, isn't it, where sort of Jupiter, what is it, Venus and Jupiter that have lined up? Recently? So they have gone into alignment, yeah. yeah. I'm going to take that, that that's me and Jamie. It must be some, something like that. Like Tell how, me something oddly know, sexual is going to happen. Superman is weakened by red sun mm. yeah. something like that has weakened both you and jamie the conjunction of Bad jupiter times. and venus yeah mm. it's all right we're hard we'll get through it it's it's corrupt it's corrupted your chi <laughs> and pissed me off yeah well, well yes get well soon to both of you in fact oh thanks babes i'll live Indeed. it's just annoying yeah i hate i hate doing anything like that. let's solve some problems that'll make me feel better out. There is a problem to be solved. We do have a problem. And Dan it is, has it there. It is from my wonderful girlfriend. Oh, she is yeah. a delight. I know. She's like this little sparkly coin in the bottom of a river that's shining at you. What a a little bit like the metaphor. One Ring, but without destroying the entirety of Middle Earth, apart from that little patch where they're all standing on the end where the good guys are there. Not that She bit. is a nice lady, yes. <laughs> yeah, she, yeah, she's all right. <laughs> She'll do. The highest <laughs> praise indeed. <laughs> She's well, right? She's all right. Yeah. You're right. Um, and this is sort of maintaining the uh, the theme from last week of the recent cold snap. Yes. Which, it is fucking cold. Now that, now that the weather is turning and yeah. we're gearing up towards Christmas, uh, there's lots of leaves around. There's lots of coldness around. I had to de-ice my car last week. On that note as oh, well, cool. I've noticed the snow... Uh, news stories have come started coming in thick oh, and fast already? this week. Yeah, yeah. It's going to snow. Of course the, it is. We're coming for a white out. The entire UK is going to be banqueted in an ice age. What will we do without the ploughs and the salt? All that shit. The fucking white apocalypse is upon us, everybody. Well, I've just taught my uh, wife to play cribbage, so we're set. I've got nice. about twenty bottles of red in the corner. We're all good. Under uh, my the dance dance scene under my stairs. It's good, good for you bottles this is of not red a under euphemism. there. <laughs> yeah, he's, got, he's <laughs> had a good old rummage in my uh, <laughs> in the cupboard under my stairs. <laughs> yeah, is cribbage a thing with the pegs? Yeah. How do you play I've that? I've just taught her how to play it. She smashes me every single fucking time. So I'm, just, I'm not, I'm not going to help her anymore. You basically just put pegs in in the shape of a penis. And you run. Yeah. <laughs> no, <I'm kidding. laughs> and the one to complete. It's, it's, a really good, it's a really good game. Is it like checkers? Fun. No, no. It's You play different sets of hands. It's, it sounds, Is it with cards? Explaining it, yeah. It, explaining it sounds really complicated, but it's not. You, You'll have to teach me to You play have cribbage. hands of cards and you earn points from making various different... It's a bit like rummy, sort of. But with pegs. But, and you peg points. So you chase. So it's just a scoreboard. Yeah, it's a scoreboard. Thing. Yeah, the pegs are a scoreboard. Right. Yeah, it's good. Fun. It's really good fun. Oh, you have to teach me to yeah, play. Yeah, it's, it's not difficult if Emily can like learn to it. Add to my repertoire of card games. Yeah, yeah, some blows I've and also co- just learned how to play backgammon, which I'm thoroughly enjoying. Although, again, I'm shit at. Mm, it's good right. fun though. Great game. Love it. You have to go around there, Dom. Blow yeah. the cobwebs out of Lawrence under stairs. <laughs> 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 Only when it fucking snows, yeah? You're not Play welcome until it Play starts cribbage, snowing. Baby. I'm going to start using that as, as like a euphemism. Like I'm going to go home to Maddie drop trowel and say let's play some cribbage baby <laughs> the pegs are a school board. <laughs> <laughs> who's pegging this evening <laughs> lovely <sighs> anyway cold weather cold yes, weather it's not it's not gonna snow let's get on it's not gonna snow that. but Go cold weather uh it means it's time for gloves yeah and Maddie's problem is this. Especially if you're a delicate little flower like Madeline is. She's yes, that absolutely is true. I just grow extra hair. Delicate and graceful. <laughs> <laughs> my hands just go crusty as fuck. Like all moisture gets drained from my hands in the snow because I just don't put gloves on ever. In the snow, in the cold even. So she says gloves. 
not being able to feel things through your gloves. I'm not talking about smartphones because you can get gloves with smart fingertips. I mean, when it's so cold, you can't bear to take your gloves off, but you can't feel anything. So you're fumbling around for your keys or phone and you can't close the button on your handbag because you can't feel where it is. Uh, Really annoying. That is annoying. And this was a case the other day as well. We were Maddie was trying to fish some change out of her pocket and just couldn't do it because of the glove situation. I think it's disgraceful that you make a lady carry change. She is my wallet. 50s upwards. That's it, Daniel. 50s up. We were at a boot fair, Lauren. <laughs> <laughs> there weren't many people paying <laughs> with £100 notes. <laughs> we were lucky to see a new pound coin. <laughs> Oh, really? Were people paying with the old pound? No, no, no. I bet no, they no. were. I did accidentally give someone a euro, though. <laughs> someone, someone, someone gave us a euro, and I accidentally gave it back to some other poor woman. Oh, well. <laughs> did I tell you recently Stuart tried to pay for a cab with euros? They not take euros in cabs? <laughs> no. Oh. <laughs> Just pulled out all this money, and the guy was like, this is euros. Ah, it's fine. We were all a little bit drunk. Just a touch. Anyway. <laughs> Yeah, well, the only gloves that you can really get any mobility in are those like sort of thin knitted gloves, and then they're shit at keeping out the which cold afford very it. little protection for you. Yeah. 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 yeah, it's a little bit like a toss up between a coat as well, isn't it? Like I've just recently purchased a sort of a warm jacket mm. so for work, but still, you know, when I was out in the cold earlier today, I thought there was nothing quite like my giant parka, but carrying yeah. around my giant fluffy coat is just not something which I can do for work, really. No. no. Mm. Mm. I always recommend a large woolen coat. Well, that's next on the list. I was going to buy two coats, but they didn't have the second one in my that's size. That's how I've always done it. Yeah. So you can keep form and yeah. function together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, fashion tips from Dom. <laughs> the most unfashionable man in the room. That actually got a really good is a discount new on that section coat. on the podcast. Yeah. Yeah. Tips right there. Christmas fashion. <laughs> Christmas fashion. See, that's when I come into my own is in the winter because I own a lot of coats. And and a good coat is layers. a valuable is yes. a valuable piece of kit. Indeed. Yeah. I much prefer the winter. It could obscure your fatness then. <laughs> I much prefer the summer. I like to scare people off of beaches with my pasty fat belly. <laughs> <laughs> but I pretend I'm a beluga. <laughs> <laughs> They make so much fucking noise. Did you know this? No, I didn't. I went to SeaWorld a few years ago. Oh. Before, before all the blackfish stuff. Oh, before it still doesn't make it any better. Well, anyway, I went to fucking SeaWorld. Um, and they've got beluga whales there. I did there. too. Um, wow. And you can sort of observe them feeding them. They come up and they fucking scream like a banshee, <laughs> right? Like you'll see there and they've got a bit of fish and it's up out of the water and it goes, ah! and it's like, I can't even do it that high. It's just like, ah! Like that it's just like <laughs> and the 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 pe- the, uh, the very nice floridian lady there with her you know sort of pencil microphone coming around to her things like oh he's really excited for his fucking you know fish and this thing's going ah! like he's being murdered and i'm just like the fuck it's is pr- this it's probably because it knows if it doesn't eat that it probably doesn't even like those fish they just get force fed them it's, <laughs> it's just so terrified of what might happen if it doesn't eat those fish yeah probably eat the fish for these pandas yeah I've been fed for oh, um, fucking time belugas are kind of um, uh, cold water they're polar polar yes, yeah polar regions do you know what I heard the other day they're which kind is of interesting poppoise. you know you know um, that, are they really I didn't know that you know that um Historically, North Pole, polar bears, right? South Pole, penguins. penguins. Yeah. yeah. There are loads of penguins in the North Pole. And you know why this is? It's because when they used to do sort of like expeditions there, they like pe- penguins, 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 penguins were a bit of a novelty. Penguins. And so they'd put penglings, penglings. In, in and take, sort of take, take them back. But then penguins are quite messy. Like most birds, they shit everywhere. Oh my God, penguin shit comes out like a jet wash. Yeah. <laughs> Have you ever seen this? No. Literally, if you go to like a penguin place, it's like... Wait and watch it. It looks like someone has shot a gun full of shit at the floor. It spreads out like a, like a, like Amazing. a head wound. They right? literally just shit everywhere. They, yeah. they shit on each other. They shit on their young. They're like they, vile, they, they just do not care where they shit. So basically, because they're just so sort of like rancid, most of these, you know, explorers who are sort of like navigating the Antarctic, say, which is the South Pole, 
would also be doing things and going up to the, the North Pole. Mm. And so, at, so yeah, just at various points, they've, you know, gathered up penguins and thought penguins. this this would be a bit of a laugh yeah. and then thought, oh my God, these, like, these are just a fucking nightmare. Well, there's some ice and snow. Let's just chuck them back out. <laughs> so they've just been like transported up there. <laughs> Is it that? The next time I go to the zoo, I'm definitely telling a small child to watch out for a penguin shitting. Yeah. Seriously, if you watch them, they just shit Sounds all amazing. the time. They're all the time. Big. I don't know how they just, they, I don't know how there's any it's all penguin, the oils penguin the left. Yeah. Mm. yeah, yeah, yeah. That explains a lot about my dog. <laughs> Is it she just poos she's lots. Just she poos a like lot. A Are you sure you've got a dog and not a penguin? She poos a lot. <laughs> and we feed her lots you of didn't fish. Get it on, you didn't get it from the North Pole, did you? <laughs> <laughs> I wonder why she stood on her back legs a lot. <laughs> why does she have a beak? Um, <laughs> uh, come truly <laughs> <laughs> she might as well make that noise to be fair she also call you a fine feathered fink <laughs> does she also look slightly like Danny DeVito with a prosthetic nose <laughs> at least my nose isn't gushing with blood <laughs> uh, oh, no but your ass is gushing with shit <laughs> Wait a second. We need to solve this problem. We need to solve this problem. So I was thinking a supportive exoskeleton within the glove. Right? Okay. So it'll help you grip things and provide extra mobility. I don't really know what that means. Talk me through that. So like a sort of skeleton of like roboticness. Yep. Under like in the glove itself that would help you. That sort of supports your hand and gives you that bit of grippy. Yeah, sounds good. For you. In a way. Okay. Yep, solved. Let's go home. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> it's very difficult to get um, machines that have such fine motor functions. Though, That's true. It? I'm sort of talking future tech here. Right, right, right. As we all know, you know, we've seen that robot just punching things. Um, I what? think the thing is as well, that the, I think the difficulty is if you're using, it's a really good idea to use like skinnier gloves with like grippy bits on. So I've got riding gloves that are um, competition gloves. So they're really, really thin Ooh, what, but they're, where did they they're come relatively in the competition? warm <laughs> <laughs> not me we come last you put them on and like dance across the table with your fingers <laughs> like crafts you just like <laughs> dump it over the table finger dressage <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that must exist somewhere yeah, if probably. not we're inventing it but they used to have the like, tech decks didn't they there's little yeah, skateboards, skateboards you could do tricks yes, with I had one of them I was rubbish at it but I had one they used to have the, BM- the little BMX ones as well what were they called oh I can't remember Tex BMX remember. Oh they were something like that probably yeah. um but because they're so thin and they've got like a almost sort of rubbery um palm on them the backs are sort of a bit f- not fluffy they're made of fabric and then the front has got rubber on it so you get the grip that you need right um because that's what they're, they're for, like holding the reins so you get that contact but because they're quite thin they are they're not particularly warm. Yeah. Whereas if you get like the giant fluffy ones, like Emily's got not for riding, just for general use because she's like a stick thin and is cold. She has these giant, and I'm not even joking. They must be at least a centimeter thick like all the, kind the of, way around. The kind of they're that so I thick. Santa and Claus wears. Yeah, like yeah. full on, like knitted with this enormous needles, like really thick gloves. But like you say, they're completely impractical. So she's lovely and warm, but she literally is walking around. Like she doesn't, she can't bend her hands. It's so difficult, isn't it? Because sort of like the warmer you get, the less mobile you are. Because like surely like the warmest gloves are like those giant mittens. Yeah. But then That's you- what she wears. What the, They've got like little, they're, they're really clever to be fair because they're the ones that are fingerless, but they've got a fold over flap. Yeah. Which is ideal because then you've got like kind of the balance, but you still got to get your little it's naked pinkies out. Frost bitten fingertips. The, yeah. yeah. It's just, it's a problem. Well, but then you need that dexterity. You need that little bit do, of being able yeah. to bend them. Like I've been wrapping my um, my right hand up recently, like over the last few days. Because when I fell on my ankle, I landed on my hand and I've been ignoring it and just like, oh, it's fine. It's a bit sore, but it's fine. And then about four days ago, I whacked it on the washing machine. Now it really fucking hurts. Oh, so yeah. I've been strapping it in like, so it's set like a, like you're holding a mouse almost. Mm. I don't know if you've ever tried it and definitely try it when you get home. Put a sock on your hand and like try and wipe your ass with it. It's a fucking nightmare. With the sock or, like, or with... Like with, that's what it feels like. With the sock through paper. Because yeah. <laughs> I, I usually wipe <laughs> like, my bum imagine, with socks. Because like, I'm right-handed and trying to wipe your ass with your left hand is the weirdest thing ever. I'm, well, not, I'm, I'm de- not an I'm ambi wiper. I'm, I'm an ambi wiper. I'm not an ambi wiper really? at all. Yes. So you, no. 
I'm so, like, like so I'm you, missing bits. If I'm if I'm ambi wiping, I'm missing bits. So you or I'm over I'm over like bashing and then I'm ending up sore. That's not it's yeah. not an ideal <laughs> combo. So don't you no. wipe your bum with you can wipe your bum with both hands. Yeah. Oh well, most of us use paper. <laughs> <laughs> hey. oh. What a fucking gag! <laughs> I challenge you all to try it because it's horrendous. Okay, we just let and you're like die. you're there trying wipe to like you're like I'm just gonna have to take it off. <laughs> Just uh-huh. choose an old, like, wanking sock or something. Yeah. Oh, because we've all got one of those. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're the one that informed me about it originally. No, Ma- Maddie's wearing them today. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fucking hell. It's a thing, Dom. Everyone's got a thing. <laughs> <laughs> At least mine isn't fucking... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She has to, free- her- has to let her hands free so that she can use her... her-, her- she, so she can u- use fine motor functions. The least I can do is warm her feet up. Yeah. <laughs> I was thinking, actually, um, talking about viscous fluids, um, <laughs> you know, like you know, like you get heat packs. Yeah, and there's yeah. Like gel- she's, she's got a fucking pocket full of them, mate. There's like a gel yeah. inside. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. What if we could make Press that button, gel mate. in some way okay to put on your skin? You, you're That's talking like idea. cloudy with a chance of meatball spray on shoes. Yeah, pretty much. So you, you could have, have like all silicone-y... the regular dexterity of your fingers. Yeah, but everything would be warm. Sounds well, amazing. sort of along those lines, what I was thinking is that if you were going to sort of like, I was, I was basing this on sort of like the, the ultimate in dexterity is basically still being able to feel most of what you can feel with your fingers, right? Mm. So you need as thin a sort of covering as possible. Yes. So I was thinking, you know, like tights, right? You yeah. can get like see-through. Similar to socks, great for wiping your ass. See- <laughs> <laughs> and you could do like a string thong thing. With <laughs> <laughs> well, then you have a tail <laughs> um so they're really th- i've never i've don't, i don't recall ever wearing a pair of tights uh, actually no tell a lie year two at school i was a um wise man no in so tights? was i a wise man or was i ki- i think i was a wise man in the school nativity play and, and you they, wore put tights. Us, they put us in like tights yeah i bring you myrrh gold and Danny A35. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not the sheerest of tights, but we'll ride for the Son of God. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, you can get like, you know, some of them are basically like see through, aren't they? And yeah, they're yeah, extremely, yeah. extremely thin, right? Mm. But they're mesh, right? They're, they're very, yeah. very fine mesh. You know what else is like a mesh? Like a sort of, you can, you can heat up like a coil, like a mesh. Yeah. Right? I was thinking, okay. if, you, if you had a really thin mesh, you could put it on your hand. And you would, it would be, you know, re- super tight, thin. And you could run like a string up to your armpit, which you could tuck here's, in and it would warm it. Here's what I was thinking. Nine volt battery in your sort of like your breast pocket. In your bra. Right? Yeah. And then have two <laughs> poppers, right, on your sleeve. And you could just pop in, pop the glove into them and connect it to the to the battery nice. and, it will, and it will just gently warm and it would look relatively futuristic and it, well. it would look just as though at a glance it would just look as though the same as when you see someone with tights and you, you only notice they've got a pair of tights on because you see that sort of like sheen, sheen of tight because you're so looking you, at her legs Ooh. you would at a glance it's just not it's almost like an hand. electric blanket for your hand yeah. yes great yeah. idea but yeah. sheer yeah mm. yeah I like that a lot. I like, that was going to suggest something very similar, like with my company. I think that's what gloves. I was getting to. Just put that's in like yeah, a yeah, yeah. piece of That water is sort of or... the logical end point, really. I was, yeah. I was just bouncing off you, mate. Yeah. That's a sort of logical end point, really. So yeah, you, like, you have a popper, poppers on your sleeve, yeah. and then you have a popper on the gloves, and you pop into them, so it wouldn't turn on just yeah. willy-nilly. But then what if you... Uh, but if it goes haywire, super heats your hands. <laughs> <laughs> you tell it like a super villain. <laughs> Inferno. <laughs> could you get like little mini battery packs? Like you could get the little um, uh, what are they called? They put them in scales and things. The little flat batteries, the lithium hearing aid batteries. Oh yeah, yeah, that kind of thing. You could put in the glove because yeah, like I sometimes so, I'm yeah. out in the fields, got my coat on, get too hot, want to take my coat off, but still need my gloves on. Yeah, I guess you. I so guess a little you could, portable um, battery would be better. I suppose it could be in the popper. Because the boys would struggle yeah, with putting it in do, their yeah. in their bras as well. You know, I guess you, you could have sort of like too. a little, um, maybe like a little wristband or something, like a Fitbit or something, which you could connect nice. it up to. Oh, if you, you could charge yeah. it. With, I could ch- plug it into my you Fitbit. You could plug it into your could Fitbit. Plug it into Apple Watch. Plug it in yeah. or wirelessly attach it. Fucking charging your gloves. Ideal. Yeah. Amazing. But you would also to fend off attackers. You could um, like turn it right yeah. up. And right <laughs> up and <laughs> 
or just disc- disconnect one bat one side of the battery from each side and connect the circuit on their head. <laughs> Awesome. I before, love that. Before Practical you know it, they'll be going secure. home, insulting their mother, being the gangster rap. <laughs> <laughs> Louis Theroux will come round and stop them having a go at their mum. Yeah. You need to chill out. May I recommend heroin? <laughs> <laughs> Excellent uh, suggestion. I like that one. Yeah. I think that'd be cool, right? And also the, the military cool. applications also <laughs> yeah. fill me full of joy because we can make a lot of money out of it yeah, as well. It's going to be like the next Electro. Could be right. Mm. Ross isn't, Ross, Ross, Ross isn't here, so you know. It'd be also be really cool because you could like clap your hands together and create sparks. <laughs> <laughs> you could start a fire in the woods. Yeah, you could start a fire in the woods. The survival situation. Are you going to start a fire with a pair of tights? Well, no, no, no. Actually, you unhooked a little bit of the thing and you like a oh, short, okay. short them. Someone's going to electrocute themselves. This is unsafe. Only nine volt though. You ever uh, put a nine volt battery on your tongue? It's no, the I've that kill never. You, not the volts. That's right. That is right. You look so surprised. <laughs> I thought I was the only person. You did per- sound quite surprised, Dan. That was quite sometimes, sometimes I feel like I'm the only person that says that. Like, it, was like, it was like what came into my head came out of your mouth. <laughs> we were we, we doing this for so long. <laughs> Holy shit. It is the amps that kill you. Yeah. Okay. So, is it we're gonna we're gonna call that solved then? Yeah. Absolutely. We should put that into production immediately. Yeah. Solved. Solved. We now need to come up with a name. You do need to come up it's with a name. It's the absolute you're not the vaults. See, I'm wondering if we should put this particular item under the Auntie Bram brand of our uh, products. Yeah, but I didn't come up with the suggestion or the solution. I know, the, but you're still the on the problem. podcast. Oh, wow. I was trying to think if something sort of rhymed or went but well you, with you. You were still an integral part of this, pro- <laughs> of this development process. I love you both too. <laughs> <laughs> something to do with hands and brams, surely. Ah, uh, Auntie Brams. Surely. Toasty hands. Hey. Oh, I like that. Auntie Brams, toasty hands. I mean, if it's slightly erotic, I'm. I'm it down. also works because Auntie Brown has got tasty hands. Always, warm lady. Warm hands, cold soul. Auntie Brown's toasty hands. Yeah, yeah. I'm told. That's the first time I'm going I've to make a named one in a long time. Yeah. Did you not name last week's? No, you. Oh no, Stu. Stu, Stu, Stu named, named last it, week. Yeah. So you won the uh, the competition last week for best solution. You've won the the team name, the, the episode name this week. Everything's coming Next up, week, Dom. Dom, you're going to be like the god of the of the podcast. Yeah, well, and well, then it'll be yeah. back to shit like normal. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> Once Ross comes back, they'll gang up on me. Yeah, <laughs> it's, Ross is your bad omen. <laughs> <laughs> He's my albatross <laughs> in podcasting. Ah, uh, well, there you go. I'm the hosting, so I need you to. Are. Finish off the show. We're all looking terribly expectantly at you, Dom. Not because yeah. we're expecting you to like order the pizza, but we, know, we, we weren't just Louis Theroux you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Auntie Brown's Tell us more, hands. Dom. <laughs> Auntie Brown's Toasty Hands is the name of the show. Remember, you can get in contact with us through a number of different channels, and you can send us your problems, your emails. Tell us what you thought. Tell us if you have a solution that you think is better for the podcast. Tell us how much you love Auntie Brown being on the show. Tell us how much you love us. You can do this by getting in contact with us on our Facebook, our Twitter, our YouTube, or sending us an email at sling, uh, fling it, <laughs> sling it, fling it <laughs> at stickitpod.com. All of these links can be found on our website, stickitpod.com. Please send us in uh, anything you want. We would love to hear from you. And going into the Christmas period, we're going to be busy. So the more you send in, the more we can do. For this week, I've been Dom. I've been Dan. And I've been Auntie Bram. With our toasty hands. (laughs) 